seven years ago, on this day, my career changed. But very thankfully, I didn't meet any accident or went into any illness or got fired, but I fired myself. And the reason I fired myself is because I was standing in one of these lines. And it took me almost five hours to come to the final destination. And it was mainly for witnessing the innovation of the year, which Time Magazine told us that it was year 2007. So what really changed? Since then, about two billion smartphones are sold and being in use from that day on. And about 4.5 billion people are on mobile handsets on a daily basis. So how did it change my career? I was a software professional from India offering the traditional software services. And what it meant that time, that organizations knew only about their internal data. They knew about their transactions, they knew about their customers, they knew about how much business they did. And we software professionals were, were busy in pulling that data, creating reports, creating dashboards, and giving historic information. And that was my profession till June 2007. So I fired myself the moment I touched iPhone and realized that the world is going to change. And we all know the world had changed forever since then. So what happened is that the industry started calling it as data deluge. We have so much of data, we have so much of flood of data that some authorities have started, is data new God? Some people started saying, is data new oil? I say that data is a new soil. You can really farm on this data. And hence, I converted myself into a data scientist in the same town of Lowell. I started a company named Findability Sciences where nobody was even thinking about big data or calling it as big data. So let's do a quick survey. Can you please raise hand those who have smartphones and just stay there? So almost 100%. Now take down the hands if you don't have more than three internet devices. So pretty much 100% of the people have now smartphone and have minimum three internet devices. And what has made that really to change in the world is the data deluge I just spoke but there is a huge prevalence in terms of the smartphones and availability of the data input devices. The second change came into is the ease of use. And we all know what this ease of use is. You can pretty much grab a handle device and start using it without any training. Growing up in India and being an engineer, I was a mechanical engineer and I had only one class of computer science. There was only one PC with a black screen, with a disk operating system, and the ease of use was so difficult that only our professor was allowed to touch it and we were all looking over his shoulder and learning computer science. But now, a one year old, and I'm sure you all must have read this and tracked this, a 14-year-old toddler ordered car on eBay. <laughs> right, this was an accident, but still, you don't need any more training. So the ease of use is changing our lives. And then, the unprecedented amount of content we are creating. And really, this is very, very staggering. I'm just putting some representative numbers, but I will be proven wrong next minute. We are uploading every minute 20 to 40 hours of videos. We are tweeting 2 million tweets every minute. The Google searches, you just named the Facebook content. Again, growing up in India, 30 years ago, my uncle in Chicago used to send us a letter. And that letter used to arrive us after six months. 
But now, during Boston bombing, within four minutes, the news traveled to India. And before even I knew, my brother called me from New Delhi. So how does it matter to all, all of us this? That in addition to these smart devices, there is now ability to store data, which was not there in the past. So we, had, we can now store large amount of data. We can analyze that data very well. Again, this, the ability to analyze in the past was not there. So we can analyze it, and once we analyze, we can visualize. So how, how does this all happen, or what, what is this I'm leading to? It's really a new phenomenon called big data, and I'm sure you must have heard, read about it. Some people must have got some wrong impressions about big data. But the amount of content which we are creating, as I just mentioned, it's really if you multiply that data with four Vs, it gets converted into big data. So what are those four Vs? The first is volume, as we just spoke about how much volume we are creating, the amount of emails which we are sending, the velocity, the speed with which the data is flying, the variety, and the veracity. So just going into volume, without really repeating the numbers again, you can now, I'm just going to tell you that in 2015, there'll be a new count of data measurement, which is called zettabyte, which is 10 raised to 21. And zettabyte probably is the end of the Z now in the alphabet, so we have to invent now the next count of measuring the data. And just a few years ago, having one GB of disk space was really difficult for us, or was very expensive. But now we are talking about petabytes of data being created every minute. The speed, I just told you about the news flying, the amount of emails which we are doing, the amounts of tweets we are doing. So it's so fast. So the data which has a speed is big data. And then third is the diversity of the data which we are creating. Now again, whenever we talk about big data, we feel about social media, Facebook, or Twitter. But I'll just give you a last example, that machine-to-machine -machine data creation. I just got a new car a month ago, and in less than 15 days, I got my first report without me asking my original equipment manufacturer via email, telling me my piston is great, my fuel efficiency is great, my tires are great. How do they know it? Because now every component of my car has a signal and a sensor which sends data via satellite so, and creates data for the equipment manufacturer and provides me as a consumer report, but they do now best planning of their spare parts or servicing. So the data is becoming diverse. It's not about people to people, it's people to machine. When we go and swipe the card, we create data. When we are driving a car, we create data. And that's the machine to machine data. And the last is the diversity or the veracity of the data is the data traditionally have really always people say that I believe in God, you believe in data. And that was the tradition because one in three business leaders don't trust the data they get. There's about three trillion dollars go west because of wrong reporting. And 27% of the people, if you survey, they will tell you that they're not sure if they really have a quality data. So with these four Vs applied to data, that becomes big data, and we all, as of this morning, we are living in the new world of big data. Now while setting up this company, while getting into the big data as a new area of technology, I didn't forget my roots. I hail from India. I grew up in the 80s in a town where having 24 by 7 water supply was a luxury, or even no, unknown. We never knew that there is a concept of tap, and we can get water through tap for 24 by 7. Having an independent toilet in a house was a luxury. So the moment this whole epidemic of smartphones and the data started coming in, the idea started flowing in our research center that how do we use this data for good? And I would like to walk you through a, four examples. Two examples happening in my research center and two the peer industry examples, just to tell you the beginning of the new era where we can do so much of good in the world using this new capability of big data. So how we can do this with the big data? Now, again, I want 
you all to raise hand that how many of you have volunteered or donated in last five years? Amazing, almost 100% of you have either volunteered or donated. Now, why did you do that? And that one of the main thing is that we all understand human insight. And we, when we start doing good, we understand first human insight and drive greater impact. So I get compassionate about a cause or a reason, so therefore I volunteer or donate. So we decided to apply this principle on the concepts of big data and see how it can really do good. And you'll find it very interesting that a lot can be done and I want all the youngsters and the research and the science student in this, this auditorium to really think about this as an idea, as a just start. And there's a long way for all of us to go to use big data for good. So what's the first thing? Is we coined a concept called digital body language. Uh, so we can actually measure people's digital body language. Because in the past, when I want somebody to volunteer, I would come and convince that person that why he or she should volunteer with me. But in the new world of big data, when, as Catherine was telling, we all are glued to the phones, how do we read the body language? How do we entice people to contribute? So the second concept we launched is how do we measure influence? We have so much of data flying. We know now from some, which location somebody is tweeting, from which location Facebook pictures are uploaded, who is writing a blog on some cause, who is really trying to gain volunteerism or donations. So we can create nodes of influence that who is influencing onto the causes. And then we can actually start doing engagement because that's one of the most important thing while doing good is that how do you engage? And as I said, from 29 June 2007, the engagement devices have changed. We are spending more time on a phone than a television. So no more I can advertise and try to entice people on a television to do good. But there are new ways through big data we can engage people. And then we can start reading the human insights. And this is most fascinating, is we can actually read through this data the sentiments, the phrases, the tones, and understand the human insight, and then start doing good. So as I said, I would like to show you some examples. And I'm going to quickly run the first example, which is really the machine-to-machine -machine data creation. And uh, I'm honored to really present MIT's Sensible Lab, which has really created a fascinating project of how the new concept of sensors and big data can be used for good. the trash originating from Seattle comes all the way to Florida. And this is just a beginning of what is possible. Because we spent decades and billions of dollars in supply chain management. We never focused on 
how to take care of our waste. So this is the first example I wanted to show you. The, the second is, this is the, we are working in our research lab. Uh, this is a company in Amsterdam named Fleet Forum. How many of you know that age group five to 29, the highest reason of death is not HIV or malaria or any other diseases, but it's road accidents. And when we started working with many of the opportunities on how can we reduce the traffic accidents and road accidents, and without getting into all the examples, I would like to share with you a very fascinating big data for good example we are doing with Fleet Forum, is that when they train these drivers in the developing countries, they have created kits for them, for their education on safety and health. So when you educate, it's very difficult because the language, the education, the literacy barriers. So they created electronic content to train these drivers. And what we are doing is, we're now applying the expression reading mechanism in order to read the expression of individuals and then convert that into massive machine data to create patterns in terms of who is liking what, how are they reacting to the each content piece, and then modify as needed. So with that, I want all of you. So tap.unicefusa.com. And just follow the steps which come on your screen. And please keep your phone 10 minutes away because if you don't touch your phone 10 minutes, you are going to help having a kid somewhere in developing country water for one day. All of you got it? Thank you.